Hi everybody, hope you like our new lo-fi look. Um, my expensive camera isn't working. When did we find out? Oh, three minutes ago. Stop looking at that camera, look at this one. We found out about three minutes ago, uh, just before Michael Serra is meant to join us from probably, uh, probably Hollywood somewhere in, in America. So, um, but of course, my years in the business mean that I don't get into a panic. Uh, my guest is Michael Serra. He's a blooming creative powerhouse. He has a brand new series uh, about to come out on uh, Hulu, second season of the new series, him and Amy Schumer, uh, called Life and Beth. I want to talk to him about so many different things that he's done, and you want to hear me talking and interrupting him, don't you? Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Serra. Hello. Hey, Michael. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Very <laughs> good. Thanks for doing this. My pleasure. My pleasure. I've been looking forward to it. Uh, well, I, I've told the viewers slash listeners in my introduction that minutes before you joined us, we've had a technical emergency is not too strong a word. Oh, boy. Um, it, it it doesn't affect your end. Oh, great. Because, but, but, uh, so, so I don't you, even you know just... if I need to hear the rest. <laughs> Yeah, I just sensed with Michael, I just lost him when I said it uh, <laughs> didn't affect him. He, he knew it wasn't about him. And no, I'm happy went. to listen. It might feel good to tell me about it. Well, it would. It's good to share. Um, I, I This this high-tech setup, I'm in my house, the top floor, the office, and I've got a very nice Sony A7 camera that, that shoots Ooh. me with beautiful lights around Ooh. it, and it records onto a Ninja external hard drive. Well... The ninja has got very ill. But frankly, I prefer myself low resolution. So for me, it's a win-win. It looks fine. And, I, you know, that's what I'm working with. So, I mean, it seems only fair that we have the same resolution. That's a good way of looking at it. There's yeah. a great democracy exactly. at play now. I was a little worried that it would look just very professional on your end and I would just look like a guy at home, which is all I am. But you, <laughs> you started as a kid, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I did. I started... Well, uh, yeah, and it wasn't a career. I mean, you know, it was nothing to do with a career or work when I started. It sort of just um, morphed into that very conveniently for me. I mean, I'm very grateful, actually, for what I'm doing with my life and that I and that I enjoy it to a certain extent. But, except but for how, these... how how did it come about? How did you come to be yeah, performing as well, a child? I was doing it as a recreation for in the beginning. You know. Um, a sort of weekend class with other kids, something to do, you know, an extracurricular activity. And it's like a, you know, kind of theater class where you're playing, you know, warm up exercises with other kids. And then you kind of knock a little presentation together for the parents, um, you know, completely unprofessional in every way. Mm. But I think actually it did a good job of kind of fostering the sense of fun and, you know, in the whole thing. And it's a great way to kind of play. It's very intuitive for kids because you're just playing, yes. goofing around. Yeah. It's nothing unusual. Um, and then I was really encouraged and very validated doing it because I was su such a nincompoop at everything else I kind of <laughs> tried to do. All of my friends growing up are like magnificent athletes, you know, just everything they tried, they became, they did at a very high level, basketball, hockey, skating, mm -hmm. baseball. And all of these endeavors were um, a source of, you know, painful failure for me, especially because my dad was, uh, you know, the coach of the team <laughs> like, when oh, I was playing no. baseball. Oh, and I was no. just, I was the shame of the team, you know, where when the ball went out to me, everybody just went, oh, no. There was one time where I was, because they always stuck me out in right field, where I was, and the ball never went out there because we were six, you know, people weren't hitting these <laughs> giant <laughs> pop flies. But so I was out there and in some sort of daydream and took my glove off and put it on top of my head without realizing, because I was a million miles away. I was doing that mindlessly and then suddenly the ball was coming to me and this has never happened and I didn't have my glove on my hand and I had no idea on earth where it could possibly be and why it wasn't on my hand that's the kind of <laughs> teammate I was <laughs> so everybody sees me out there just confused and they're going what's he doing <laughs> and, it's, and it's on your head it's on my head <laughs> and then your father is the coach and my dad's and he's, going he's the guy at the side with his head in his hands he's going that's not what we went over <laughs> And you grew up in Canada, and, and you were part of Second City. People within the comedy know Second City. I would imagine that your general British 
person probably wouldn't. It, it, it was the breeding ground in Canada for so many huge names. Could you tell yeah. us a few of them? Second City, yes. I mean, you know, famously produced John Candy, Joe Flaherty, Martin Short, um, Catherine O'Hara. Eugene Levy. Andrea Martin. Eugene Levy. I only kind of did classes there. I never performed. At Second oh, City. you didn't. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay. I think okay. I think if I had stayed on that sort of, I would have gotten into that pipeline. But um, mm. to be honest, the problem was the like I was ten years old doing that, and it was a, a major commute for my parents <laughs> to, <laughs> to take me. You know, on the weekend I had these. It was like two hour classes every yeah. Saturday, but it was the most fun. It, it was something that I do think I kind of. Um, I consider that I, if I I've never had really any acting training outside of that, but that was a because the all they hammer into you is listening. That's really what they every week they just teach you over and over again that you have to listen to the person that's in front of you and your scene partner well, and you play that's improv a great, games. That's a great lesson. Though. It's a that's big a great takeaway. Lesson. It's a great that's takeaway. That's a huge lesson because Especially that's the thing age. that you have to keep uh, have to keep reminding yourself of when you're playing any scene. Uh, yeah, you can be so true. concerned with thinking, what am I going to do? Oh, I've got this thing to say. i got that thing. Right. Just hang on a minute. Just listen to what yeah. they're saying. So there you are. You're in, you're in Canada and you're starting to perform as, as, as a child. What was the thing? I think Superbad was the first time that I... I, I knew you. Oh, now, there's a, yeah. there's a piece of work That's that, that really stands. That's a really good piece of work. How did that come about? I was brought in. I had a very you know good audition, which felt great. I mean, was put at ease in the audition, too. You know, we're, we're laughing in the audition, which already feels good. You yeah. know, when you come out and you feel yeah. good about it anyway, whether you get it yeah. or not. I, I've, I've, never, I've never known that feeling. I've, no. I've never known that feeling. You've just made me remember something that I have to tell you because I think you'll, it'll be of interest to you. And um, I'm sure it's something that you have no concept of because I don't think anybody does. I, I was friends with Gary Shandling before Gary passed away. Oh, and who's another person him. that I just couldn't believe oh. I got to have. Wow. Yeah. You know, every moment I had with him was a complete gift. I mean, I think we were having a phone call a week before he passed away. And we were talking about doing the trip doing an ad, a, a you know a sort of a adaptation or whatever you would call that a yeah, remake yeah. Um, of the trip with Gary and myself in so, so in he, Hawaii so he was a, he was aware of the trip yes 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 he was very aware of the trip yeah we were <laughs> <laughs> yeah and we were talking about he and I doing something so like we we just we we were all kind of interested in the uncanny and pairing that's something to get my head around bloody hell i can assume then that he liked the trip then that, that's specifically the... you i think he just kept kept mentioning you ah no he didn't no 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 no. <laughs> now you see now you've gone too far i would and, and you know for a brief second as you started saying that i believed you and my my, well, my, my little I, I went like this i went oh. <laughs> no he yeah he loved it and we were it was oh my god wow okay. it, yeah so that would have been exciting let's talk about uh, the great bill murray because You've had uh, the experience, well, you've had it a couple of times, as far as I can see, of being such a huge fan of somebody and then yeah. getting to work with them. So That's true. Uh, Bill Murray, if, is this true that you watched Ghostbusters at age three? Yeah, I, I had the chicken pox and I had the worst case my doctor had ever seen. Wow. And that was, I guess that was like the best way to distract me. I loved Ghostbusters. I think my, my entry point actually for the Ghostbusters growing up in the 80s and 90s as I did was the cartoon with <laughs> Lorenzo Music doing the Peter Venkman character. Right. And I loved that and I had all the toys from that. And that, But then I got into the movie and I think I just watched it every day because I was sick. You know, when, you know I mean, that's what kids do, right? It's just mm -hmm, they have one mm -hmm. thing they want to watch over and over. You grow up with a, with a love of, of Bill Murray and then yeah. bloody hell... In that thing he did, that that uh, very Murray Christmas, the the, yeah. the Christmas special that he did for Netflix. Yes. W what did you play in that? I'm like a hungry agent that wants to snap <laughs> him up as a client. It was great. I think I was may maybe a last minute replacement because they called me, and I was in Los Angeles at the time. That was shooting in New York, and they said, "Will you come to this thing?" And I flew right in. I think Jason Schwartzman was sort of my agent in this situation. Because, well, Jason first. Firstly, brokered my, my first meeting with Bill Murray. He knew how much Bill meant to me, and he was just a very, very sweet person. And he invited me to come visit him on a set of a movie that he was doing with Bill. This was a uh, Roman Coppola movie. And so I came to set, and Jason brought me over to Bill and introduced me as his great friend. So this is my great friend, Michael. And Bill was 
very sweet then, and I already was sort of in shock to meet him. But we were just standing in a, a kind of very casual circle, a great way to meet someone, you know? Uh, just, like, killing time on the set, joking around. I mean, he was being funny. He was um, <laughs> making us laugh. I think he has a special power for that, you know, for... Yeah, for making people making laugh. Making people laugh. Yeah, I think that's an acute observation. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you, you're going out on a limb there. <laughs> and creating a sort of sense of, like, relaxation and hanging out and fun. Anyway, that was great. And then they called me and I came and did the Christmas thing. I was, like, cramming on the flight, trying to come up with funny things to say. I wanted to sort of do as much as I could, you know, bring as yeah. much as I could to it. And then we had a sort of plodding rehearsal, plodded through it a little bit, you know, and they were like, okay, we're going to be a half hour. And Bill said to me, okay, well, either we'll get it or we won't or something like that. And I was like, I took that as, I don't think he meant it this way. I think, you know, but um, I took that as like, you know, come ready, be ready when you do the scene. I don't think he meant it in an aggressive way like that. I think if anything, it was kind of like words of encouragement and then very supportive during the scene, you know, laughing at what I was saying. After a take, he would say, okay, that was great. Say that again. You know, um, yeah, it was a it was a great hero experience. And then we were hanging out and having some drinks and hanging out at a table. And I made Bill laugh at the table. And it and it was a real laugh. It was a real yeah. laugh. Yeah. And yeah. Um, that's like, that's, that's, I can warm my hands by that for the rest of my life. You know, there's a few moments of making a, you know, people that are that monumentally important in your life laugh. You know, I was going to say to you when when you did that that stuff with Bill Murray on his Christmas thing, we to what degree in the scene could you just be yourself and take chances, and to what degree did you sort of hedge your bets? You always kind of read the environment, don't you? I mean, and they were so supportive. First of all, the whole atmosphere of that shoot was very was very like a hangout. They, it was Sofia Coppola oh, directing it, yeah, and. Um, yeah. They do a great job at that. I mean, Amy Poehler was there and also in the scene with me, and I've known Amy since I was 13, um, and she's always been a big champion of mine because uh, I was doing Arrested Development, the TV series, and she was married to Will Arnett at the time, so she was around, and um, she just always was so sweet with me. So it was great that Amy was there. It sort of felt made it feel very safe. You know, we rehearsed it and said a couple things, and they were like, oh, that's funny, say that. You know, so they were already very encouraging um, which makes you feel safe to take chances. And they want you to do your thing, you know? There, yeah. There's sometimes a danger of being too deferential and too yeah. sort of, no, you're, you're there for a reason. It, they, they treated me like I was doing them a favor. It didn't feel that way. I mean, for me, I was like just, it was a miracle to be in all of their <laughs> proximity and, you know. Oh, fantastic. Now, yeah. you mentioned you mentioned Amy Poehler, but it's another Amy, Amy Schumer, who is part of the, the, the thing that's prompted this discussion because it's <laughs> life and Beth. We're not just chatting for the fun of it, although <laughs> Lord knows it is oh, fun. Oh, I thought we were. Okay. Right. We're just, we're just hanging. <laughs> uh, so, so the, the reason, uh, Hulu, season two, Life and Beth with Amy Schumer. Yes. Now, the great discuss. Amy Schumer. Yes, well, yeah, yes. Well, we're, we're, yeah, you know, it's nice to be doing a second series of a show. I never thought I'd find myself in this uh, position. It's a good feeling. I hope we I hope we keep going with it. Because you've done other shows that didn't go to a second well, season? No, or because I, you've not done shows no, before? Or I what? haven't done a TV series uh, since I was a child. And, oh, um, okay. I, I was on this TV show, Arrested Development, yeah. back in 2003. We started it. And, you know, to be honest, and that was network television. You know, Hulu is a kind of a different, you know, different experience being a streaming service. I'm proud to be a part of it. Um that's the other reason I'm happy to be coming back. You know, it's sort of uh, it's a it's a nice feeling. This I'm sure you can relate to. But to be on a a TV show, well, I think that's a nice kind of job. You start to really appreciate the characters in the world, and you get to live in it a bit. And uh, to be a fan of it yourself is a real pleasure. To be to be a fan of the working experience and the show, it's yeah. it's. I feel very lucky. I think I landed really well with it. It came out of nowhere for me. Amy texted me out of the blue about it during the pandemic or toward the end of. 2020 I guess it would have been and um and sent me all the scripts and I just reading it I thought well this is so nice I really love wow. what's going on here so I feel really lucky and I, I it's great that we're gonna make another season which is supposed to happen I think next next year a- Amy is uh is fantastic she's the captain and the leader of this show she's directing or sharing directing duties my character is is based on her real life husband who she knows incredibly oh, well so she'll okay. come out with something so dialed in and so yeah. specific and so you know something i never would have thought of and it's it's just great that that's a fun way to work 
Well, Michael, what a pleasure. Um, really nice pleasure, to talk Rob. to you. Yeah, you too. Yeah, I'm glad we wow. got to do it. It's been, it's been yeah. a huge pleasure. I'm a, I'm a huge Rob Bryden fan, so been looking I'm, forward to it. I'm so pleasantly surprised. <laughs> I, I, I didn't had no idea whether you'd have come across my efforts, so that's... that's uh, we could talk that's all about really human nice. remains next time. Get lost. Which I'm, You're not I'm serious. an enormous fan of. Yes. Really? Yes, and that's a show I think an ex-girlfriend of mine put me on to years ago, years ago, and, you know... Oh, yeah, I had I had an ex girlfriend. She was a dark and interesting. She soul. put me onto a lot of great, great stuff. Yeah, some of my favorite stuff. First of all, Gary Shandling was aware of my existence, and now <laughs> this, my God, fantastic! Great, thank talking you so about. much. Yes, um, yeah, thanks for having me. That. Me too. Oh, it was a my pleasure. pleasure. Yeah. And we will meet in the flesh at some point. Yes, I hope so. Thanks, Rob. See you, man. Take care. <laughs> <laughs> 